Let's go back to the White House now to senior advisor Mitch Landrieu, who was part of the vice president's delegation in Memphis yesterday. Uh, so talk to me about the energy there in the church and what mourners said to you. Uh, I know they want this George Floyd bill, but they don't have the votes in the Senate Andrew, is where it failed. Well, first of all, it was a very personal day. It was, it was a very sad day. It was very hard to uh, hold the hand and look in the eyes of Tyree's mother uh, and understand that she had to watch her son get beat to death uh, with fists and boots um, when he was just trying to get home and wasn't far from the house. And, you know, I know I'm supposed to be the infrastructure coordinator and rebuild build bridges and uh, rebuild the country for the president, but on days like that, you almost have to stop and really focus on what really happened. When that young man's soul uh, left his body, a piece of the soul of the country died with him. He wasn't just uh, one of us, he was in some ways us. He was a 29-year-old young man. He had hopes and he had dreams, and uh, he died a horrible death. And I think it's just really important that we take a moment and stop and say that should not happen in the United States of America. And we have to work on the federal, sto state, and local levels. We have to work with our communities uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen again because the president believes, as many of us do, that people have a right to be safe and that police ought not um, be seeking and destroying but protecting and serving. And we have to get ourselves to that point in this country, and we have a lot of work to do. And you, you're the former mayor of New Orleans, and you've seen so much of this in your own city. I wanted to also ask you about how you see this argument, the debate over the George Floyd bill, because Vice President Harris said this yesterday at the funeral. Her position is very clear. As Vice President of the United States, we demand that Congress pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Joe Biden will sign it. And we should not delay and we will not be denied. It is non-negotiable. She's saying it's non-negotiable. Senator Tim Scott, who may or may not have his own presidential ambitions, he's going to Iowa, uh, has said that it's a non-starter because the last time it fell apart in the Senate over Republican objections to changing qualified immunity for the police. And without that, critics and civil rights activists say that it would be meaningless. Well, the president supports that bill. The president supported, supported it before. I think that members uh, on the Republican side on uh, both the House and the Senate were against it. But as the vice president said yesterday, they should re-up the bill, and if they pass it, the president will sign it. But let me say this. It's not just about one piece of federal legislation. It's about the way we as a nation see uh, the relationship between the police and the community. And, of course, it's important for people to feel safe and to be safe, and there is a way uh, to have safety and justice at the same time. That is not what Tyree Nichol got, and that is not what has happened uh, in uh, incidences across the country. So this is, a, this is not just a federal issue. On the local level, when I was mayor, we had one of the largest consent decrees in the country. We had to find a way to hire better and hire right. We had to find a way to train. We had to find a way to hold people accountable. We had to give officers the authority and the ability, no matter whether they were with senior officers or not, on the scene to intervene when officers were doing uh, a bad job. We need to fund mental health and substitutes. All of this thing is important for one simple fact, that when we have American citizens who are just trying to get home from a traffic stop, that ought not be a death sentence. Not in the United States of America. And so we all have a lot to do together. And one step is the George Floyd Act. And the president hopes that Congress sends it to his desk and he will sign it when they do. The president's going to be meeting with some members of the Congressional Black Caucus later today. You invited, when you were mayor, you invited the federal government in. That consent decree was the Justice Department coming in and going through that police department. And that backed you, gave you some more muscle for your reforms. Should the federal government, should the Justice Department, Civil Rights Division now go into Memphis? Well, I can't make a comment about what the Justice Department okay. can or should do in any specific case, but let me just say this. In the city of New Orleans, we had some very serious problems, um, and, and I thought they were substantial enough uh, because of the death of Ronald Madison and other folks on the Danzinger Bridge and other egregious efforts that we have to rebuild that police department from the bottom up. And I, during the time that I was mayor, I was very proud of the work that the police department did with the community. That's when we started putting on body cameras. That's when we started accountability measures. That's when we started hiring better. That's when we started training better. And that's when we started making sure that other officers had the ability to intervene when some of their uh, fellow officers who were getting out of the way were not doing it appropriately. Many officers responded well. 
But we have a lot of work to do here. And, and the funerals of this uh, nature that we had yesterday with Tyree Nichols, when we lose part of the soul of this nation, it makes us all weaker. And it's just something that we should recommit ourselves to as an entire country uh, and as a community of people that have a commitment to each other that each and every one of us should be safe every day. I know you speak from the heart because of that, uh, not just your whole record, but we were just showing pictures of the Confederate statues that came down on your watch yes, and the speech where you brought the, the community together behind that decision. Former Mayor Mitch Landrieu and, of course, the infrastructure chief at the White House, and we will talk again about that subject. Come back soon. Thank you so much.